overwhelmed when she hears the sound of his flute, embrace me with her with love while I constantly sing Shamasundara's glories to her. May the daughter of Maharaj Vrishabhanu, who becomes astonished like a vine of golden champaka flowers when she sees Krishna, and who becomes overwhelmed when she hears the sound of his flute, embrace me with love while I constantly sing Shamasundra's glories to her. Shri Radha astonished with the flute song. How sweet is the stage of devotion in practice when one eagerly prays for the service and the audience of the beloved deity. Even the eternally liberated associates of the Lord pray for this taste, and the Lord fulfills their prayers. <clears throat> Krishna told Lila Shuka, I will make you taste the bliss of living in Vrindavan in the body of a practicing devotee. <laughs> Radhe Radhe, can you hear me? Yes. Radhe. So here is very beautifully described how important it is that we are intensively praying. Even the eternal liberated associates are praying for that. So how much more intense we should pray as we are ordinary fallen conditioned souls. We are not eternally liberated souls. We are eternally bound souls. So as Gurasundra was mentioning the verse of yesterday, by this intense prayer, we can unlock the mercy from Radharani. She will give us if she can see that we are doing that with a pure heart. And if it is our real heartfelt desire to be there and to, to do our seva in the kunja, then she will allow us to do so. So for me, this is very beautifully described and it's like a recommendation for us how we can get there by really longing for it and intensively pray for it because only by the mercy of guru and the acharyas we will get the mercy from radharani so for really Doing a prayer, we need to surrender ourselves to the lotus feet of Gurudev. And by doing so, we become receptive for the mercy who is flowing down through the Guru Parampara, through Gurudev to us. That means that we have to be 
receptive disciples means we have to make us receptive means that we allow ourselves to get the mercy because the mercy is always there but because of our own blockages because we are blocking ourselves with so many concepts that we have so that the mercy cannot come so it is on our side that we make ourselves receptive for it that we check ourselves what is our real desire as gurudev always says that everything is dependent on our own desire so and this also the verse that uh, was uh, the verse in itself is also a beautiful prayer showing to us how we should pray Radhi. It's very nice that you that you use the word um, receptive. That we we make ourselves open for this, for the mercy, prepared for the mercy, because the. because there's no cause and effect from praying. If praying does not guarantee mercy, mercy comes when it comes. So praying is a way of softening our hearts, opening our hearts, opening our souls and when the soul is completely soft then it's completely open for mercy when the soul is completely soft then that's when we're completely ourselves completely in our soul identity So we can't buy the mercy with the prayer. Two hours praying, one uh, one liter of mercy, please. Mm -hmm. There's no no Amazon mercy. Yeah, yeah. this it's is softening. The... It's softening and opening. Yeah, and when we're completely open, then the mercy. There's no other step to take then we're completely in our constitutional position, completely in our soul, in our svarup, completely with our Radharani. Prayer is the crying of the baby for the mother, like Gurdiv explained yesterday. Isn't it that she yeah. come aware that the toys are no more touching the baby so much, and now mother knows that uh, while well, baby really need me, I have to come because till now we playing with the toys, so there is no need. We forget. And this verse, it's also astonishing what I find out that there are we as Manjari, uh, we are constantly seeing the glories of Shamsundara.
En uh, we learned about that our focus is Radharani, but here we sing the glories of Shamsundara constantly. We remind Radharani of his attractiveness. Yeah, that's don't forget. Don't forget what the uh, what the goal is. That's a, we make her happy with this. Mm. It's not that we glorify Shamsundara to our own happiness. No, we are. We make her happy with this singing her his glories. And uh, she is astonished and overwhelmed when she listens his flute. And then we, as her manjari, simultaneously we sing about his glories. And so when she is this kind of overwhelmed and astonished, that moment she out of glückseligkeit what is this bliss it's it's a, a great great bliss of our swamini she will embrace us then mm -hmm. because she's so overwhelmed and happy to listen the flute and listen about her hero's glories It's really beautiful. Embrace me with love while I constantly sing Shamsundara's glories to her. So beautiful. And the one last element maybe to point to in the verse. That she's astonished. He's surprised. Here, Radha, she's been meeting Mohan eight times a day for 100 million years. And every time she's astonished at how beautiful he is. Every time is new. Every time is fresh, like it's the first time. Mm -hmm. I think this is a little difficult for our Western minds. We're used to repeating. And we like repeating. We're happy when we have the same thing every day. So this idea that Prem grows every day. That the lover is more beautiful every day. This is something very difficult for us to feel. I this think also person. for the Eastern minds. You think? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I Our think Japanese, uh, Japanese friends could answer this. I think this is uh, because the difference between the material world and the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, everything is ever fresh and new. And for the devotee, also the chanting, this mantra, who is a spiritual, transcendental sound vibration, the devotee gets never satiated because every day it's fresh and new and so it is new realizations are coming and we are growing more and more and there is no end to it because it is spiritual so in the spiritual world where there is nothing material everything is fresh every day for time is no ending and in the material world Everything has a limit. If we are on the level of our senses, then we need always something new because we get enough. 
one time for something, but in the spiritual world, it is unlimited. It has no limit and no end because there is a completely uh, different uh, feeling. There is no like time and space that we know it here in the material world. And I think it's not only because of our Western mind, it's because of our material concept that we have. So therefore, if we are reading all these beautiful literatures who give us a picture of what it is to be in the spiritual world, we can change our own mentality, our own conceptions of what is what, because we get an idea how it is in the spiritual world. And even that we have an active role there as a manjari, a maidservant of Srimati Radharani. This has to be our goal, the exclusive service to the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. That means to be one-pointed in that. We have no other interest in anything else. And if we are one-pointed and we can fix our goal, the seva in the kunja, then slowly, slowly, we will reach it. It is a process to get there. It is not so easy to be done overnight. As Gurudev also says, this is not an accomplishment we can accomplish in one day or in one week. It takes some time. And being in the process, nobody knows how long it will take. So we have to be patient with ourselves. And the most important thing is that we remain within the process and we never give up. And Gurudev is our navigator who is navigating us through the goal. The goal is Radha Mohan. He says that all the time that Guru is not the goal, but he's helping us to reach the goal. And the important thing for us is that we accept that help and that we let guide us through the goal. There is no sound, Udafji. I, I cannot listen to you. What happened? You are muted? The others can hear? Yeah. No. No. Oh, no, no, no. No, it's coming. Another problem of Einstellung. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have the falsche Einstellung. <laughs> the devotee who feels the pang, the pangs of separation from the Lord, is in the same condition as a housewife whose husband is on a journey. Such a faithful wife does not go to other people's homes doesn't attend public festivals and doesn't make up her hair and dress nicely. She simply sits at home crying out of separation from her husband.
In the same way, a devotee who feels separation from the Lord gives up all sense enjoyment, his heart melting completely. The sweetness and beauty of Radha's service is incomparable. Shripad weeps. May Sri Radha, the ocean of qualities, be manifest in my heart. So may, may she appear in my own heart. Suddenly, he gets a transcendental vision. It is nightfall, and Shripad, in the form of a maidservant, is engaged in Shimati's service while she stays at her in-law's place, Yavat. In a distant forest, Shamasundara plays his flute. This sweet flute song is like a mantra which attracts everyone's minds. Sri Rupa Goswami says, Sri Krishna's flute is like Indra's thunderbolt that pulverizes the mountain of Radha's patience. Well, as soon as Sri Radhika hears the flute, she loses her patience and she becomes stunned and astonished like a vine of champaka flowers. Astonishment is the result of rasa. <clears throat> the essence of rasa is astonishment. Without this, there is no real question of rasa. No. This is Alankara Kaustaba in Kavi Kanapura. Because Sri Radha is stunned, she will not be able to run out and meet Krishna anymore. She is a Champakavan with very amazing attributes. Although an ordinary Champakavan illuminates the forest with its golden beauty, the bee will not land on it because its honey is bitter. But Shiridada is an extraordinarily qualified Champakavan. The Krishna bee is eager to drink her honey, and therefore he calls her with his flute playing. But who will give Sri Radha, who has lost all her strength, although she is the root power, the Mula Shakti of God, 
who will give her the strength back to go out and meet Shama Sundaram. By Sri Radha's grace, her maidservants are most expert in this. They give her her strength back by singing sweet songs to her about Shama Sundara's loving pastimes. This is so beautiful. So and we, it's very beautiful. And uh, we can learn from this that Sri Radha's grace here in this, that means she was teaching the maidservant before how to sing, what to sing about Shamsundara's glories. The same way she is also teaching her own glories to the maid servant. So the maid servant are expert in uh, singing the glories of Sri Radhika. For example, when uh, Mohan is uh, not conscious about when he is in what is it in English? Vain in vain? No, in swoon. In uh, he fa faints, faints, faints. Yeah, He's fainted. Yes without consciousness. And uh, so then, there is only one thing, What ha even Swamini cannot uh, awaken him. And so she teached the Manjari to sing about her glories. She cannot sing about her own glories. So the maidservant sing about her glories. And then she will come, he will come back to conscious. And in the same way, we listen here that by Shirata's grace, her maidservant are most expert in this. So she teach also the how to sing about Shamsundara's glories. So they are expert in both. It's very very beautiful to see how much expert the maid servants are by Sri Rata's grace. And uh, so she is stunned. She cannot move. It's a similar situation when Mohan is not in conscious, they cannot meet. And the same is when Radhika has done it in this way, they will not able to meet. And so there is the need of the Manjari. Our Seva is, is, is very important in, under all circumstances. Hmm. She's tired. She hasn't, she doesn't, it's in terms of energy, you could say, as well. She's tired. And she needs the Manjaris to give her energy to go out. So it reminds, you know, that, of course, Radharani is the embodiment of pleasure-giving energy. But yes. this energy flows also through the Manjaris. And when she's tired in her pleasure-giving energy, it doesn't have the energy to go out and find Mohan, then she needs the Manjaris to give her the energy. She and this is, is what we do too by our service. We give an energy to Manjaris and to her. <laughs> she is astonished and overwhelmed. This is what you read in the verse. Yeah, no, no it says she lost her strength too. But yes, you're right. So she is not able to move because she listened to the flute. And in that moment, she is overwhelmed and astonished, and she cannot move. The sweet flute song is like a mantra, 
which attracts everyone's minds. And uh, you read, Sri Krishna's flute is like Indra thunderbolt that pulverized the mountains, the mountain of Radha's patience. As soon as Sri Radha hears the flute, she loses her patience and she becomes stunned, 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 and astonished like a vine of champaka flowers. The essence of rasa is astonishment. But also it's astonished that the, the manjaris don't have this reaction by listen they also listen to flute but they don't get stunned like swamini so this is for me is astonishing <laughs> Why is the, the mantra not good? Huh? Mm. What? No, just go ahead, please. No, please. Whatever I say. I was just going to say that um, the essence of Ras is astonishment. This is <clears throat> this is the surprise at the newness of Ras, of the of the of the juice of the pleasure. It's a beautiful thing. It's a positive thing. It's not. It's not something that. Uh, it's not something that. Uh, which I say weakens her. Yeah. So, yeah. Actually, we are the shadows of Swamini and we, we are really like a part of her, but our rasa is different. Our rasa is seva ras. So this is, uh, because of this seva ras, we are not get stunned by the flute song. We are still able to serve our Swamini so that she will be able to meet Mohan. This is the goal. They're meeting and uh, our service is to make it possible like this. But it's still astonished that the flute song you read that it's like a thunderbolt. Well, how is it? What is pulverizing the patience of our Swamini? Is not touching us in this way. Yes, because the Manjaris have no interest in meeting with Krishna. Because exactly. it's Radharani's Krishna. Therefore, she has a different feeling about that than the Manjaris. Because the Manjaris are only concerned for the exclusive service to the lotus feet of Sri Radhika. They are not interested to meet with Krishna, as Swamini is. But they are concerned to prepare her and dress her and decorate her so nicely that her Shyama will be very satisfied with her by meeting. So I think it's because of that, that the influence is not the same, or it doesn't touch the Manjaris that way that Radharani is touched by the flute play. That's the point. Mm 
but everyone is is touched by this flute song. All the gopis, all the sakis. Yes, because they also have the desire to be with Krishna. Mm. And Manjari desire is different, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I mean exclusive <clears throat> service to the lotus feet of Sri Radhika. It says it. It's exclusive only for that purpose. No other purpose is there. Therefore, they are like 11, 12 year, years old. And the gopis and the sakis, they are older. So there is a different feeling. And mm -hmm. because of that, Srimati Radhika can keep the manjaris very close to her. And they feel the same as Swamini feels. Because they don't have that attraction to towards Krishna. For example, some <clears throat> some sevas they are very expert in doing the seva. For example, one time Krishna was painting the breasts of Srimati Radhika and his hand start to tremble because he was so overwhelmed by that situation that he was not able to do a nice painting and decoration. So then the manjaris came and sent him away. They say, go, go, you cannot do that. We will do. This is not for you. You cannot do. So only the manjaris can do that or can have behave like that with Krishna. So that means that the Manjaris have a, an exclusive position. Also, they are in the Kunja. Only the Manjaris are allowed to be in the Kunja. No male is allowed to be in the kunja. So if we want to have a relationship, then we need a spiritual body, a manjari body. Only with our manjari body, with our particular individual seva that we have within the kunja, we can have a relationship. With this material body, we cannot have a relationship in the spiritual world. We can have relationships in the material world because we have a form. So in the spiritual world, we need also a form. Without a form, we cannot have any relationship. And only if we have a form, there is, there can be such feelings like separation. How we can feel separation from something that we don't have any relationship. Mm. So relationship is very important. First, we have to know our spiritual body, our seva, and in the spiritual world, within the kunja, either there we are not independent, because there is our Guru Manjari, who is giving us our seva. So in no point in time, there is a question of being independent. That is an illusion to be independent. If we want to be independent means that we cannot surrender. And if we think that we are independent, then we are fruitive workers. And that is not that what we want to be. We want to be in a seva mood. And to come to that point, the first thing that we have to do is to surrender, surrender to the holy name, surrender to the lotus feet of Sri Guru. Surrender means that we give ourselves. And when we are giving our heart and soul, then we can be guided by Gurudev. Here, 
and in the spiritual world by our Guru Manjari. When we are coming into the Kunja, the first thing what we are doing is we washing the hands and the feet of our Guru Manjari, and then she's giving us our Seva. Our Seva may not be always the same. The Manjaris are always doing that, what is needed at the moment. It's not functioning, it's deep to the No, it's like, okay, I don't know. Was, um, yes, he made it in the past and he made it in the So for us, as soon as she be sorry, uh, 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 yeah. This uh, is a very important thing that we become personalists. We are personal to each other because especially in the Western world, impersonalism is very common. And we can see that also between devotees also happening because we are used to be impersonal. But this Gaudiya Vaishnava culture is all about personalism. So we are supposed to be Das Anudas, means the servant of the servant of the servant, means to be kind and loving to each other. How we can be that in the spiritual world when we cannot be it here? So we have to learn so many things and purify our heart by the process of hearing and chanting so that all the unwanted things from our heart will disappear and our heart becomes like butter, loving and caring. This is Vaishnava behavior, means that we are loving and caring to each other. We are concerned for each other, that anyone each and every one of us can make the progress who is required to get to the goal. And real caring is coming from the heart. We can see this in Gurudev, how much he is caring for each and every one of us. Without any consideration, without any judging, He's accepting us as we are with all our faults and our, all our mischief and misbehavior. This is the meaning of unconditional love. And that would be very favorable for us if we can cultivate this love within our heart. Because it's all about loving at the end. Srila Prabhupada many times says in his books, it's a loving, this bhakti path is a loving devotional service. He never says fearing devotional service. So we should really come out of all the concepts of this Vaidhi Bhakti and come into the spontaneous loving service. And our Gurudev is the perfect example for that, how to live and how to follow. He shows us how to love and what is all about. The only thing that we have to do is to follow that and to cultivate that culture and that love in ourselves.
as soon as Sri Radhika hears the flute, she loses her patience and becomes stunned and astonished like a vine of Champaka flowers. Astonishment is the result of Ras. Rase saras chamat karo yam vina narasurasa. The essence of Ras is astonishment. Without this, there is no real question of Ras. Because Sri Radha is stunned, she will not be able to run out and meet Krishna anymore. She is a champaka vine with very amazing attributes. Although an ordinary champaka vine illuminates the forest with its golden beauty, the bee will not land on it because its honey is bitter. But Sri Ratha is an extraordinarily qualified champaka vine. The Krishna bee is very eager to drink, to drink her honey. And therefore, he calls her with his flute playing. But who will give Sri Radha, who, is, who has lost all her strength, although she is the, the root power of God, Mula Shakti, who will give her the strength back to go out and meet Shyama Sundra? By Sri Radha's grace, her maidservants are most expert in this. They give her her strength back by singing sweet songs to her about Shama Sundra's loving pastimes. With the brush of love, they first draw a picture of Shama's Sweet pastime, sweet pastimes on the slates of her own hearts. Sorry, I think again. <laughs> With the brush of love, they first draw a picture of Shama's sweet pastimes on the slates of their own hearts. And then they draw that picture on the slate of Radha's heart reviving her like expert artists. So the Manjaris, the maidservants, make the picture in their own hearts, the picture of the pastimes of Radha and Mohan. They tell the story in their hearts on the pictures. And by doing this, they give the picture to Radha, and then she takes her strength again. So their hearts are closely connected. The picture that they paint on their own hearts by remembering the pastimes are then painted on the heart of Radha.
Robert, he goes on, blessed are God has made servants. How expert they are in their service. By describing playful Shama's pastimes to emotional Radha, it is as if they bring him right before her eyes. Shimati cannot tell whether she hears about Sham or whether she actually sees him. Shimati cannot tell whether she hears about Sham or whether she actually sees him. Slowly, her inertia disappears and she regains consciousness. Shripad makes Shri Radha bloom with joy by sprinkling her with the sweet nectar of Krishna's pastimes and makes her fit again to go out and meet him. There are all these different forms of art. There's music, there's singing, there's painting, there's storytelling. All these kinds of forms of communicating, which communicate through feeling. There's no mathematics. The Manjuris don't make a mathematical equation to show Radha to get up and, and run back out to her Mohan. It's all forms of transferring feeling. When Sriman Mahaprabhu, who had taken Sri Radha's mood, became overwhelmed by feelings of separation from Krishna, he was similarly revived by Ramananda Raya and Svarup Namudar. In the daytime, the Lord could find some distraction by performing his regular duties. But at nighttime, the pangs of separation became very intense. Ramananda Rai then recited verses to him about Krishna's pastimes, and Svarup sang songs. A very nice reminder that Mahaprabhu was in when he was in material body, he was in ecstasy always because missing Krishna, because separation. And in material body, then the Ramadan Rai and Swarup Tamadab were his manjaris. And this is why we sing and make music and chant. To encourage our, our family. 
to give her the energy of our feeling. Now Babaji continues, the maid servants are the best doctors to cure Srimati's disease of separation from Krishna, from Mohan. Srimati has personally taught them all these expert services. Srimati's mind and body were first unfit to go out and meet Mohan. But because of the Kinkaris, the Kinkaris' wonderful service, she is now able to go. Srimati is very satisfied. And she will give a reward by casting a merciful glance at her with beautiful with her beautiful eyes and embracing her with love the maid servant feels completely blessed with such a reward by embracing her merciful swamini has given herself to her maidservant. Who can, who else can be so merciful? Baja, Baja Moana, Venu, Vrindavana, Yave, Kanu, Nandera, Manandana, Shiam Rai. Shunni Yavinura Dvani Shiyamadara Shandani Pagalini Sayadikaya. When Sri Radha hears Shamraya Krishna, the son of Nanda, playing his enchanted flute in Vrindavan. And when she sees him, she becomes mad and runs to the direction where she hears that flute. Sahasastambhabhavode chamatkri tangi hoye viparita pulake purita Champa kalatika sama angalata nirupama bhava bhusane vibhusita. She at once becomes stunned out of astonishment. The hairs on her body stand erect, and her vine like body resembles a champaka vine adorned with the ornaments of ecstasy. Enno kale kube hai viva langi radikaya ekin kare marama bujiya sudha sandivane nama hari lila gunna grama Oh, when will this maid servant understand overwhelmed Radhika's heart and glorify the names, pastimes, and qualities of Hari that are like reviving elixir to her? Prita hoya vinodini madis ishwari takurani amare kuri biyalingane ette kula lasha mone purna ube kuta dina 
श्री पार प्रबोधानंद बानोदिनी राधा माय मिस्ट्रेस विल देन लविंगली एम्प्रेस मी श्रीपाद प्रबोधानंद सेज वेन विल दिस डिजायर ऑफ माय माइंड बी फुलफिल्ड And with that, we complete the commentary of verse nineteen. This is also beautiful meditation for today, Udavji. Hmm. This. Uh, embrace of our swamini the maid servant feels completely blessed with such a reward by embracing her merciful swamini has given herself to her maid servant who else can be so merciful I think this is this moment is the fulfillment of our desires as manjari. There is nothing more than this. This is the fulfillment of our rasa. Hmm. And this last uh, sentence is also a prayer the author is praying for that what he says at the end when will that happen to me right yeah, this is propaganda propaganda saraswati takur prays like that so this should be Uh, a motivation for our for us for our own prayer that we pray for that because there is no guarantee for it we should pray and endeavor and be and have a sacred greed to reach that so this is a very nice for our lila smarana when we are doing our bhajan that we can go deep in this lila and get the feeling as you said udava before this is not a mathematics means this is not a philosophy we cannot understand that by rationalism or by mathematics as you said these are all feelings this radha rasa sudanidi is a feeling that we can get when we give ourselves to it fully without any expectation to get something that means selfless selflessness like unconditional love is means i give all my love that i have to the maximum extent without expecting anything in return that means unconditional is a real love because this is not a business like i give like, i give that amount and i'm expecting something in return this is not a business relationship it's a loving relationship loving means i give because i want to give because i love without expecting anything in return but when swamini sees that pure love 
then she cannot resist to give to give it back because this is how a relationship works relationship means it's a giving and becoming an exchange it's a loving exchange therefore she is so affected of the pure love of her manjaris that she will give that embrace about because it's coming out of her love like swamini radharani she wants us to be close to her she wants us she wants our seva she appreciates that she likes that like our gurudev he wants us to be near to him because like that we can get the feeling it's a personal thing so therefore it's very important for us that we come to vrindavan and get the direct association of gurudev the association with the dham and the association with radha mohan who are never leaving vrindavan so it is said that everything what is outside of vrindavan is the vaikuntha manifestation of the lord even mathura and dwaraka is a vaikuntha manifest vaikuntha expansion so the madhurya ras can be found only in vrindavan so we can cultivate the vraja bhavas anywhere in the world but vrindavan is the best place to do so because maya has no influence here in vrindavan she has only influence outside of vrindavan therefore for us in the western world it's sometimes very difficult to practice and be very serious and very steady and to keep the good standard that we have it is very important that we come to vrindavan and get the mercy so this is my invitation to you all to come to vrindavan as often as you can and get the benefit of being in vrindavan have the association of gurudev doing our seva here chanting our nam japa doing sankirtan so that we can keep that vrindavan within our hearts wherever we may go Gorsundra, Prabhu? Yes, please. I will ask him. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Yes, sir. Yes, uh I, i just wanted to ask if you wanted to continue the um point that you were on uh in reference to um swamini giving herself to her maid servant and how that um is like an essence or a culmination of success in the practice yeah this is uh 
I I always try to get a point for the medi for my daily meditation, and so I share this with you. Uh, mm. So this is today my my point of meditation. This moment when she will embrace me, and I I like to feel this, and uh, I also like to pray for this, like uh, our prob. Prabhupada Nandaji is giving example to us. So that we pray for this and we can stay in this meditation the whole day mm. and feel her compassion towards us when we are uh, successful in our service. And by her teaching, we will uh, come to that point. But it's all a mercy of her. But it's a beautiful thing and it's this is a real astonishing. We are not so much touched by Mohan's flute song. We are touched by when we have success in our seva towards our Swamini. And when she rewards with a casting a merciful glance on us with her beautiful eyes. And she will embrace us with love. This is our goal of our service. And uh, so, yes, this is the beauty of our morning class, that we get a point of meditation for the day, what I feel. This saved me the whole day. <laughs> So let's stay in this. So beautiful. I see nothing. 